So before we start looking at graphs, we want to look at some of the algebra behind polar coordinates. And so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine our xy grid here, and then we have some point up here, x comma y. And we want to go back and forth between what this point is in rectangular coordinates and what it is in polar coordinates. Well, if you recall, with polar coordinates, we have, we're looking for two values. We're looking for a radius, which is the distance from the origin. And we're looking for an angle. The angle measured the way we normally measure from the positive x-axis in standard position. And if you look at this picture for just a moment, you'll start to realize that this looks very familiar. This will give us the usual right triangle that we've drawn over and over and over again with this distance, this distance being x and this distance being y, which means that we can use the formulas that we already know to come up with relationships here. So we have cosine theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r, and sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, y over r. And so if we re re rearrange these, we get r equals, <coughs> excuse me, x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. And these two formulas give us the conversion from polar to rectangular. Now the way that you remember which way you're going is that you're in the end you end up with a formula for x and y and x and y are the rectangular coordinates so you start from the polar coordinates r and theta plug into a formula and get x and y. And so this is the formula for going from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. What if we wanted to go the other way around? Well the other way around is a little bit more complicated. It's not too bad. Uh, let's go back to uh, this picture here. Our goal is to try to relate both r and theta in terms of the values x and y. And so if we look at this, we see that tangent theta, tangent is opposite over adjacent, tangent theta is y over x, <clears throat> which we can rewrite as theta is inverse tangent of y over x. But I'll put a little star above this, and I'll say why that, we have to worry about that star in just a moment. And for r, we see that we have a right triangle, so we could actually use the Pythagorean theorem. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, or if you wanted, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And again, there's a little bit of a star here because we're not entirely sure. So what's going on? Um, this value of theta here, the inverse tangent function, inverse tangent of a number, uh, let's just use the letter c because I haven't used that yet, the inverse tangent of a number we know always gives you a value whoops, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In other words, it always gives us a value in either the fourth or the first quadrant. Uh, but we have all four quadrants to worry about. And so here we have to th we have to think about this, whether we want the inverse tangent of it or if we want to add pi to it to move it into the second and third quadrant. Similarly here, we saw earlier that r could in fact be negative. And so uh, you'll see this formula over here on this side in, in a number of textbooks, sometimes without the plus or minus, sometimes without any indication about what's going on here. But in fact, it's better to come over to this side and use these formulas instead. So this is just a word of warning. Uh, if you're going out on the internet looking for extra help, rectangular, um, <clears throat> the formula you see may not always be the best formula to use. And the reason why is, again, related to these stars I put here. Uh, the angle theta can be in any of the four quadrants, but the inverse tangent will only give you angles in quadrant one and quadrant four. The radius here technically can be negative over here. If it doesn't have the plus or minus, then it makes it look like the r is always positive. So again, just be aware of that and just be careful. Let's look at a couple of examples converting between polar and rectangular coordinates. Example three, find the Cartesian coordinates of the point with polar coordinates five comma two pi over three. Take a moment and try to do this. So one thing you might do is you might jump straight to the formulas and the formulas will work, uh, but it is important to also understand the logic and the ideas behind the formula. 
So we'll go ahead and work that out in detail and see how these two things relate to each other. In theory, you really shouldn't be needing to memorize any new formulas at this point. All right, so what do we have? We have the point 5 comma 2 pi over 3. Remember that this corresponds to an r and this corresponds to our theta. And so if we look at a point, if we look at our origin here, we need to go out at an angle, uh, whoops, at an angle of 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is over here in the second quadrant. And then the radius is going to be 5. And so we need to find the corresponding x and y values. And from this, we, from this picture, we can see, again, we can draw on the right triangle here. This is our x value. Notice our x value is negative. Here's our y value. Our y value is positive. And the hypotenuse of that right triangle is 5. What is the angle? Well, 2 pi over 3, it's in the second quadrant, so we have to use a reference angle. The reference angle is going to be pi over 3. And now we just have a triangle that we can solve for x and y from. So our x value is going to be, well, it's going to be a negative value. It's going to be negative 5 times cosine of pi over 3. And then the y value is going to be 5 times sine of pi over 3. And so if we do the calculation here, this is negative 5. Cosine of pi over 3 is going to be 1 half. So this is negative 5 halves. Sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. So it's going to be 5 times root 3 over 2, which is just 5 root 3 over 2. Now, if you use the formulas directly, what you'll see is you'll have x is equal to 5 cosine of 2 pi over 3. And you're still going to have to go through the logic of figuring out what cosine of 2 pi over 3 is, which eventually, following the exact same process, will lead you to the exact same final answer. All right, so we're going to have, in order to calculate this, you're going to have to go to the reference angle anyway. You're going to have to identify the sign. And so the formula does require the same steps. But it's important to sort of connect this back to the picture. And so this is converting from polar to rectangular. So from r and theta to x and y. So let's look at another example, but going in the other direction. Find the polar coordinates of the point with rectangular coordinates, negative 3, negative 4. So negative 3 is over here, negative 4 is down here, and so our point here, negative 3, negative 4, looks like this. And we need to figure out our r and our theta. So we'll draw the triangle here. We have our theta is this whole angle, and then our r value is going to be this one. Okay, a couple things that you'll notice. First of all, you'll notice that we're in the third quadrant since both of these are negative. Uh, you also notice that our angle theta is going to be, well, it's also it's going to have to be something between pi and 3 pi over 2 in order to get us into that third quadrant. And so what you can do from here is a couple things. Uh, focusing on just the triangle by itself. If I use this geometrically, so think of this as a physical distance of 3 and a physical distance of 4, this will be 5, and then we'll have this, um, I'll use the letter rho here for the reference angle. We'll have this triangle here, which is something that we can set up and solve. So uh, let's say tangent, oh sorry, this 5 right here is 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, the super common uh, Pythagorean triple that we've run into over and over and over again in this semester. Tangent of rho, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 4 over 3. This allows us to calculate rho, and rho is going to be the inverse tangent of four pi, excuse me, of four over three. And so our rho value is going to be, as I pull out my calculator, inverse. Uh, let's see, put myself in radians because that's what we've been using. So inverse tangent of four over three is equal to zero point nine two seven three. 
Now this angle rho right here only counts for this. And so we have to remember that we want theta, and so we have to add pi to that. So this value plus 3.14159 is, so theta is equal to 4.0689, and our r is equal to 5, and this gives us our value for r and theta. Now the warning here comes from looking at the, uh, the formulas that you might see elsewhere. You might see the inverse tangent of y over x, theta is equal to this. Let's put a little line right here like this. And r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. If you just blindly plug this in to the calculator, so you'll do inverse tangent of negative, uh, negative 4 divided by negative 3, and you just plug that in, you'll get the value 0 0.9273 which is the same value we got down here. And if you plug it in here, well, this one's not so bad. This one will get you uh, x squared is gonna be our three squared, negative three squared plus negative four squared, which is square root of nine plus 16, which is square root 25, which is five. And you'll see, you'll get the radius right. The radius is five, but the angle will be wrong. And again, this comes from the fact that when we do the inverse tangent, the inverse tangent will only give you angles in quadrants one and four. If you are in quadrants two and three, you have to do extra work. You cannot just use the formula, which is why I strongly recommend you draw these pictures every single time that you do these uh, these calculations, just to make sure that everything makes sense. Um, it's so easy to get to, into the trap of just blindly using formulas and not thinking about it. And then when you get things wrong, you don't really have a basis for understanding why it was wrong. You just know that it was wrong. You sort of think to yourself, oh, I just used the formula wrong. No, there's, a whole, there's much more to it and it comes from understanding the picture more than it comes from just trying harder with the formulas.